Hello, New Light family. Welcome to our Cyber Sanctuary. Once again, we are here with the Word of God, and I'm excited to share this word with you. We're going to be talking about unwavering faith, faith in the face of delay. So we're going to talk, actually for the second time, we're going to talk about this again. So I'm excited to get into this word and share this with you. Let us pray. Father, we bless your name today, God. You've been so good, so kind, so merciful, and so um, loving toward us, God. And we take time to acknowledge you, to bless your name, God, for every single blessing, Father God. We thank you, God, for instilling unwavering faith in the lives of your people. We pray that you strengthen us. Give us what we need in this word, God. Speak Holy Spirit, Father, and we shall listen. Move and we shall follow. All of these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. So as you know, we're talking about, we've been talking about unwavering faith for this month, this month and last month. But also, this is my second installation of this. We're going to be going to be following up on what we talked about last time we were together. All right. So here is a short, short review of that. Remember, we talked about the life of Joseph, right? We talked about him and his brothers, all the things they put him through. Um, and then we talked that we moved on to when he went to Potiphar's house. OK, so but as we were talking about that, we were picking up just certain things that the enemy is going to throw in our way to make us waver. Right. Um, he's going to throw many things at us. And we talked about how people are going to notice. Right. They're going to notice God's favor on your lives. And when it's somebody of the kingdom of God, when they see favor on your life, they celebrate it. They want to give to you. They want to boost you up. But when the world sees it, they want to exploit it. OK, they either want to exploit it or they want to extinguish it. One or the other, the world wants to do. And so we have to be watchful and mindful. All right, the second thing that we said was it's going to result in haters, right? Those ones that want to exploit or extinguish our faith because it's different than theirs. We're going to attract some haters some people who just won't like the way we do things, right? Uh, next, we will see envy and strife. We saw that with his brothers, how much they strived with him because his father gave him Joseph, that is, the coat of many colors, right? They hated him all the more, right? And because his father loved them so much, they began to envy and strive against them. All right. The next we see weapons and we said not necessarily handheld weapons, but we talked about plots, ploys, tricks and tactics that the enemy and people use to destroy or extinguish our faith. We talked about next is a sellout or betrayal. Right. They sold him for those 20 pieces of silver. Right. And so we have to expect people to sell us out and betray us also. Right. We can't be surprised. Like I cannot believe. Yes, you should be able to believe because you have been forecasted this thing. You've been told beforehand that these are the things that the world and people will do. Even your closest brethren. Right. His closest brothers were the ones that sold him out. All right. We all should, should be able to expect people to lie. And when they lie, they will cheat, right? We didn't have that in the Bible, but no, we know that from the saying that when, if people lie, they will cheat, right? They lied, they cheated, and they will steal from you, okay? We talked about how they took his coat, right? All right, next, they will spread it too, right? They lie on you. It's one thing just to lie, but they will also spread it to everybody in your family and make you look like the bad guy. And then the next thing we talked about was repeat, because as we talked about this and he made it down to Potiphar's house, we saw the same dynamics come up when we talk about Potiphar's wife, right? Lied on him, envied him. She had a plot to destroy him. She, she spread the lie. All of these things that we talked about here, we saw them repeat once again. But one thing we do notice is that he did not compromise. Joseph kept the same personality traits. He kept the same consistency. All right. And so in that message, we covered the things that the enemy is going to do, right? The multi-level attacks is going to come from the enemy to destroy our unwavering faith. And many times he's going to use people, right? All of those were through his brothers and through Potiphar's wife that these attacks came toward his life. All right. So we must be mindful of these tactics that the enemy tries that we fall for many times. All right. Next. 
today's message as we move on to the new information this thing really excites me we're going to continue in this story but this portion of the story is going to talk about the manifold blessings that god releases because of our unwavering faith right as we stay consistent as we stay consistent to these things that we're going to talk about here today as we do that god has some things for us and that's somebody shout to you right there get excited that if you hold on if you remain consistent to these things we're going to talk about today god indeed has a reward for you that's some good news now let's go to the information in between right Genesis chapter number 39, that's when he's leaving Potiphar's house. He goes down into the jail. That is chapter number 40. So I do have to let you guys know I'm going to, I don't have a specific verse because we're going to look at verse after verse after verse. And we're going to move through this story very, very quickly. I'm going to give you guys the backdrop of what's going on through it. And we're going to highlight some verses as we move on. Okay. So Genesis chapter number 40, he's at the jail. God gives him favor with the head of the jail, right? And he has charge over everyone that's there. Wow, how the cream rises to the top, right? Awesome. So after that, you had the you had Joseph there, you had the butler, and you had the baker that were there also, right? They both had dreams while they were there concerning Pharaoh, who had put them both in the jail along with Joseph, right? And so they both had different dreams. Joseph interprets the dream, right? He interprets the dream of the butler first, okay? He interprets that dream first, tells him what's gonna happen in three days, Pharaoh's gonna restore your job and you're gonna be doing the same things you were doing before you got here to, uh, to the jail, all right? Three days uh, afterwards, after those three days and the the baker sees that the dream interpretation was good, he begins to share his, okay? But in between there, Joseph speaks to the butler. That's so confused, easy to mix it two up. But he speaks to the butler and he says, look, verse number 14, all right, we're gonna pick that up, all right? But think on me after he tells him, you know what, let's read 13 also. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up your head all right, and restore you unto your place, and you shall deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou was his butler. In other words, you got your job back. Reinstatement, right? 14. But think on me, Joseph says, when it shall be well with you, and show kindness, I pray, that, that you would show unto me and make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this house. So that he said, look. I did this wonderful thing for you when it comes to pass, okay? Remember your boy, all right? Tell the Pharaoh to get me out of here. I haven't done anything wrong. And he begins to talk about that in verse number 15. I haven't done anything wrong. Bring me out of this house. I didn't do anything to Potiphar's wife. That kind of thing, right? And so I, I like this, right? I, I like this. And I want to lift up something right here, all right? And this is what Joseph saw as his way out. Right? In his mind, he had a plan formulated here. All right? That you know what? When he goes up there, he tells the Pharaoh, Pharaoh comes down, brings me out of the jail also. Right? That seemed like a good plan. And sometimes we find ourselves in the same position in life. Right? We find ourselves in uncomfortable situations and we think, you know what, God? It should work like this. It should go like this. Well, maybe you're going to do this for me. Maybe you're going to look out for me here. You're going to bless me here. You're going to take care of this here. And many times, God doesn't do the thing that we had in our own mind, the plan that we set that seemed like it was the right thing to happen and the right thing to do. It doesn't go according to plan. And so the same thing happens to our man Joseph here. All right. And I want to highlight this part before we get into the, the many blessings, all right? This part is so very important to all the rest of that. what goes on. Verse number 23, all right, we're going to skip on down. Once Pharaoh gets back, right? He gets back, he blesses him, he reinstates him, and the butler goes on about life um, like it was all good, all right? He hung the baker, um, Joseph interpreted his dream, and he said, look, you're going to go out of here and Pharaoh's going to hang you. And it did come to pass, right? And so verse number 23, yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. Okay, so 
the butler forgot all about him. All right, left him in the jail. Now, chapter number 41, look how chapter number 41 starts. And it came to pass at the end of two full years, somebody say two full years, all right, that Pharaoh dreamed and behold, stood by the river. In other words, that two full years is the amount of time that Joseph remained in the jail. Right. Many times when we have a plan in our mind, right, we want to get out right then and there. But I want to say that, you know what, sometimes we will be forgotten and we will be forsaken. All right. It, it happened to John the Baptist. Right. Remember when he was in the jail for um, speaking to Herod, right, about taking wives and things like that. He spoke him to him and he had to go to jail. And John the Baptist says, look, should I look for another? You're supposed to be the savior, all these things, my cousin, all this stuff. Should I look for somebody else to bring me out? He had a plan of how he thought he was going to get out of that jail. All right. And so he was forgotten. And it felt like he was forsaken, right? But even Jesus, when he was on the cross, he said, look, Father, why have you forsaken me? There will be seasons in our life where it feels as if we will be forsaken, all right? But I want you to know that when we're talking about unwavering faith, all right, even when things don't go according to my plan, I still don't lose faith. Look, somebody needs to tuck that in their spirit, all right? Not necessarily the things that the enemy has done to me, but even when God doesn't do what I think he should, that, that's, look, that touches somebody in here because some of us have gotten mad with God. Why didn't you spare this? And why didn't you allow me to do this? And I worked so hard for that job and promotion. Why didn't I get it? Why did you forget about me and gave it to the guy that I trained, the guy that came to the job 10 years after me, the guy that didn't deserve it, the guy that didn't have the training, the guy that didn't have the qualifications? Why was I forgotten? Why was I forsaken? And some of us hold anger. We harbor resentment toward God because we haven't received the things that we feel like we should. All right. But we have to have a mentality that no matter what comes my way, all right, no matter who it's from, all right, my faith will not be wavered. I won't go from one extreme to the other. I'm not going to go from loving God and worshiping him and shouting in church to I resent God and I'm a bit sad at him and I'm not going no more and I'm walking away. And that's how we wave, right? When you move, all right, when you transition from one extreme to the other is when we wave. All right. When we waver in our faith, but for unwavered faith, no matter what comes, you have to have consistency and commitment to stand, to stand pat, to be that unmovable. Right. Like that tree planted by those waters. Right. Your roots run so deep in this thing that it does anything that comes. I'm not moving. All right. Now. The first thing, the first, we're going to talk about the attributes of unwavered faith, all right? We need to demonstrate these attributes. Many of us, we want the reward, right? We want the reward, but the reward comes after consistently demonstrating these attributes. And we're going to use Joseph to show what attributes we need, all right, to have this unwavering faith. It takes endurance, all right? You can't just be patient for one day and say, oh, I got unwavering faith. I'm, I'm an unwavering, right? You can't be, be married for two days and say, you know what? I'm a faithful husband. No, you got, a, you got a lot more time to prove as being a faithful husband, all right? Or being faithful to God. It takes time to prove it, all right? You have to come through some obstacles, all right? Now, the first, the number one um, attribute of having unwavered wavered faith is patience. All right, patience, because what we talked about is not going to look the way that I thought, right? It takes endurance for days, for months, for years, for decades, all right, to prove to self, to prove to God, to prove to others, all the above, that you know what? I can't stand against whatever the enemy throws against me. And we all need to take up that mentality. We need to have that mentality in our mind that, you know what, no matter what comes, it's not going to shake me. No matter what the enemy throws my way, no matter what people throw my way, and even the things that God brings, right? Or even the things that God, sometimes, look, that person with that, the hurricane comes through, right? 
uh, we call that a God, what do they call it? A God made disaster or whatever they call it. Um, and so sometimes even the things that God allows, many times we have resentment because of those things. But no matter what comes, we have to be faithful to him. All right, let's move. All right, so when you are patient, you will be remembered. Verse number nine. All right. Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me inward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. We dreamed a dream and one night I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. All right. And so afterwards, he remembers then that Joseph was the one that did interpret the dream and he tells Pharaoh what went on. OK, so two years he had to endure. He had to show unwavered faith and consistency in this thing. Right. It took him all of that time. Many of us, come on, let's be honest. We would have been bitter writing letters down to down there to the chief butler. Remember your boy, right? Remember like, sending messengers, to, doing whatever we can to get out of that situation. We don't have any record of that. He stayed unwavered at least two years in this jail until it came. All right. You got to love that about my main man, Joseph. OK, we're going to move down to chapter number 14, 41, verse number 14. All right. Here's another attribute that I love about Joseph. Then Pharaoh sent. All right. Once once um, word was passed on to him that Joseph was down there, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. Catch this. And they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Now, many of us going in there, our countenance would have been down. We would have been bitter because we were there for so long, right? We've been mad. We would have been mad. It don't matter. Pharaoh, the butler, whomever. We've been mad at all of them, right? <laughs> but he said, look, not only was he not bitter, but he also was willing to be humble enough because to shave and to change his raiment means that he gave his best presentation of himself before the king or before the Pharaoh. OK, so that shows that he was subject to the power above him. Many times when we get upset, we don't care who you are. I don't care who it is. I'm not doing we want to tell everybody what we're not doing because we're in our anger and our bitterness and our resentment. Right. But look at Joseph. Right. The fact that he shaved himself showed that he's going to present the best version of himself. All right. And so I love that about him. He did the small things, all right? It showed his humility. He was willing to be subject to the Pharaoh. Catch this. Even though he was a Hebrew and this was an Egyptian, right? These were people spiritually at the time were kind of below the people of God, all right? But yet he still humbled himself before the Pharaoh, all right? I love this also in verse number 16. Here is the next attribute. And Joseph answered Pharaoh. All right, after he told him, he says, look, Pharaoh, Pharaoh had a dream also. Look, I have a dream also, and I need interpretation of this thing. OK, look at verse number 16. He says, and Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. All right. And he begins to tell the story about his dream. What happened in, in for, to save us time? He has a dream about seven cattle or kind. Um, some were fat, some were lean, and the the lean ones or the skinny ones ate up the fat ones. All right, same thing. He had a dream about ears of corn. Some of them were fat, plentiful. Some of them were skinny and lean, and the skinny and lean ones ate up the fat ones. All right, and it was telling about the seven years of famine that would uh, follow the seven years of plenty. OK, so that's what happens in his dream. All right. And I gave you the interpretation also. OK, but. Verse number 16, what was so good about verse number 16, I'm going back to 16. All right. Is that he said it's not in me. God shall do it. He gives God the glory and the credit. Right. Many times when we have 
our gifting or we have a talent, we think it belongs to us, right? He didn't he didn't possess the gift that God had given to him, right? He had already uh, interpreted accurately the dream of the baker and the butler, right? So many times we can't take ownership of the thing we should have stewardship for, right? If it belongs to God, it's look, this is God's. And Pastor Chalmers, I give you credit. You bless me every time. If anything happens, her favorite thing, to God be the glory. And this is the essence of what he did here. Look, if it happens, whatever happens, look, it's God that's going to do it and not me. I love that about him. All right. And now next, we're going to skip on down to verse number 33. All right. Now, after he interprets the dream properly, now, he tells him, he said, look, we got this famine on the way. Verse number 33, he says, now, therefore, let the Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt to be able to manage and to be able to smartly uh, work these seven years of plenty and these seven years of famine. OK, and I love this thing because Joseph didn't promote himself. We're talking about attributes, right? We're talking about attributes that we need to have if we're going to have unwavered faith. You can't always promote yourself. You can't always give yourself that pat on the back. You got to be able to uplift others, right? Because think about it. If many of us, if we properly uh, decoded the dream, the whole nine yards, we'd be like, you know what, Pharaoh? It's nobody else, you know, that can properly do this. You know, you need to put me in place. All right, so I can help manage this here family. All right, many of us, we would be promoting ourselves and putting ourselves into position. No, 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 not Joseph. He says, look, Pharaoh, if I look out. He says, look out a man, right? Obviously, if he's standing right in front of him, right? He said, look out amongst your people. Find somebody who can do it. He didn't promote himself, all right? And so we have to be mindful that we aren't always ready to promote ourselves because God, look, how can God do it if we're so busy trying to promote? ourselves okay and he tells him let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land take up a fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years and he begins to give him but he never promotes himself in it that's what I love about him another thing as the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 it says look your gift will make room for you it will sit you before great people and and here's what happens here your gift will speak on behalf of you. All right. If you trust, if you have faith in the gift that God put in you, it's going to speak for you. Right. It's going to speak beyond what you can say. It's going to go in places that you cannot. And that is what we have to do. Those are the attributes of unwavered faith, because I believe that God is going to do this and not me. All right. Now, from here on, right, we're going to, these are the attributes of one who has unwavered faith. Next, we're going to talk about the results of having the unwavered faith. Somebody should have shouted right there. All right, so after this happens, right, Pharaoh asks, he said, look, can we find somebody to catch this thing? You got to love it. This is Pharaoh. This is Egypt. This is who we know uh, who never really to have a relationship with God. He says, look, can we find such a one? In whom has the spirit of God? <laughs> I love it. Look, even the, your enemy will, will call on the name of God when you do this thing right. When you have unwavered faith, right? All right. And so I love that thing. Now, the first thing that happens is verse number 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has showed you all of this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art or as you are. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou, or greater than you. And so the first thing that we receive is recognition. Many of us, we fight, we claw, we scratch, we're looking for the promotion, we're doing all this just so we can be recognized in our relationships. We say, you're like, you never hear me, you never listen to me. We, look, we do great things, we just want somebody to say, you know what, good job, you did a great job, that was wise, that was smart, that was awesome, right? We're all looking for that recognition, right? And I love even our God, right? When we're talking about our lives now, the first thing that Jesus does, even in Revelation, he says, look, I'm going to declare your name before my father. Ah, Jesus. 
look, I, I had to find a reference. I believe that's Revelation. I think that's chapter two. Uh, that's chapter two. But it talks about how he's going to speak our name. Right. We're going to get that recognition. Right. If we have that unwavering faith, we're going to get that recognition that our souls desire. All right. You may have been forgotten for a season, forgotten or forsaken for a season, but you will be remembered on a long term basis. Wow. What a blessing. All right. What a blessing. All right. People will see what made you great. He saw that he was wise and discreet, right? Many times we fight because we don't think people see that we are great. We are awesome. Yes, you are great. You are awesome. And God wants to do some wonderful things. If you would stay committed, if you would show these attributes of unwavering faith, all right? Don't catch this thing. Catch this. Don't cash in your long-term rewards for temporary recognition. Oh, look, look, look what I did. Oh, look at me, look at me, look at me. And lose out on the long-term blessing that God has for you, like an insurance policy, right? Don't let your insurance camp, uh, policy cancel for a $200 payment when if you get an accident, he's going to pay you the value of a whole vehicle. All right? All right? So, we're getting short on our time, so I want to run through these last two verses, 40 and 41. All right, let's do 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took up, well, 40 and 41. All right, just that. I will set you over all the land of Egypt. Power, position, and power. Many of us are also chasing power and position, promotion, and things like that. All right, but the true power comes from the relationship with God. Next is his voice. All right, next is his voice. In, ver in voice, verse, in verse, all right, number, mm -mm. okay, verse number 40, I'll read that. He said, you will be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. In other words, when you speak, people will listen. Many of us struggle, and we, we, we believe there's great things on the inside of us, but when we speak, nobody listens. Maybe we need to spend more time and consistency with our unwavering faith, all right, and let God promote us to a position that when we speak, all right, people are commanded to listen. They have to listen, okay? And so God will give power to your voice, all right? Also, he will give purpose. All right, purpose to your ideas, those wonderful ideas that you have to do this, to do that, to invent this, all right, to maybe we should try this, all right? Many times our voices are not heard because we haven't walked in our purpose long enough for our voice to have echo, okay? Next, 42 and 43, and Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck, and he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had, and they cried before him, bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And the next one is possession, right? We all been looking forward to this one, right? Possession. We love this one, right? Have all the trinkets and the goodies. But notice that the possessions were last. The possessions were last after the recognition and the power. All right? God will take up all of, care of all those things. All right? The next thing that God does, he restores rightful relationship. Afterwards, in uh, I believe verse number 45, I won't read it because of time, is that Pharaoh gives him two wives and his son, Manasseh and Ephraim, they're born out of these relationships. All right. And as we know, God works it out so that his brethren that sold him, they end up coming back to Egypt because of the famine that was in the land. And it declares that that famine was across the whole world. They go down into Egypt and his relationships were restored. All right? And I love this because once again, Joseph didn't show the bitterness like we were had him sold me and I can't believe you do something like that. But he restores the relationship. He restores the relationship with his father, brings his father there. His sons receive the blessing from Jacob or Israel because of it. He received the blessing of Jacob before because of it. And God truly wants to bless you when you show for that unwavering faith. Let us pray. God, we bless you. We thank you, God, that you are restoring relationship. God, you, you want to bless us with so many things if we would have 
unwavering faith. God, help us to have a mentality to stand firm. God, to be unmovable even in the midst of situations that we don't understand when we get attacked by the enemy. When anything comes, God, give us the strength to stand in this last and evil day. Empower your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. New Light, I love you. I pray you're strengthened, and I'll see you next time. Bye.